2 Corinthians 11, 16-30 I repeat, let no one think that I am a fool, but if you do, then accept me as a fool, so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying in regard to this boastful confidence, I am saying not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool. Since many boast according to human standards, I will also boast. For you gladly put up with fools, being wise yourselves. For you put up with it when someone makes slaves of you, or preys upon you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or gives you a slap in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I'm talking like a madman. I'm a better one. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless floggings, and often near death, five times I have received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys and dangers from rivers, dangers from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked, and besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness." Welcome to episode 25 of our series on 2 Corinthians. This week, we're going to continue examining Paul's exploration of power and authority. What are the things Paul boasts of? Those opposed to Paul. Dare we boast of anything in our lives? Or what do those boasts say about us? How do we understand power and authority? We will address this and more, but before we begin, let's pray. Mighty God, you have shown your great, great power in the Lord Jesus Christ, who surrendered his life for ours. Help us learn to look to him as the source of our confidence in life and in death. We pray this in his name. Amen. Sometimes I suffer from insomnia, and it is miserable. Try as I might, I can't go to sleep, and what makes it worse is that if I'm tired like that, I don't feel like doing anything constructive, so I just end up turning on the TV. Nowadays, it's not so bad with the on-demand options out there, but 10 years ago, such nights were a miserable affair because of all those terrible infomercials. Countless minutes and hours of people trying to sell me things I don't need and probably don't work. Countless billions have been spent, I'm sure, over the decades on this worthless junk. I mention this because infomercial makers love health and beauty products. For the low, low price of five easy payments of $19.99, they promise you too can have healthier, beautiful skin. Have you seen the latest Jazzercise exercise video? What about the Ab Blaster, Thigh Master, Rear End Eraser, you name it, and someone has a contraption and a hokey promise to make if only you have some money. Now I know all of this is laughable, but think about it, they wouldn't keep making those commercials and contraptions if people weren't buying them hook, line, and sinker. The simple truth is that this late night phenomenon is just another example of our society preying on our insecurities. We all want to be svelte and beautiful. We all want to be respected, honored, even loved. We all want status. We all want some power that we can exercise over our own lives. We all want to be seen in the best light. Our greatest insecurity is to be thought of poorly because that means we are vulnerable to the power and authority of others as they judge us. We hate weakness and we especially loathe it in ourselves. Here Paul speaks to us directly. Now, Paul is continuing to defend himself against the super apostles who claim power and authority and do so by running down Paul and questioning his authority. They call Paul weak, unrefined, a lousy public speaker and not fit for such a fine community of means like Corinth. Paul's too rough around the edges. And if you want to be the right kind of community, the super apostles tell the folks in Corinth, you need the right kind of representatives, the right kind of public faces if you want to maintain your stagnant status and dignity. Being respectable is their currency. 
To all of this, Paul takes up the mantle of being labeled a fool. In fact, if being a fool suggests weakness while their supposed authority due to their refinement suggests power, then Paul readily embraces the title. They are boasting by human standards, he says in verse 18. And if by power you mean taking advantage of others, he goes on in verse 19, then please call me weak as he insists in verse 21. In fact, he goes on to show the best contrast between himself and them in verses 21 through 28. He is a Hebrew of Hebrews, an Israelite, an heir of Abraham of the force, uh, first order. He is even a better teacher and apostle than they are, for he has suffered greatly for the gospel. The marks of his power and authority are the lashes he has received, the scorn that has been poured upon him, and the dangers and near-death experiences he has weathered, and all of it for the sake of the his faith in the Son of God who loved him and gave himself for him, as he tells another community in Galatians 2.20. Once more, Paul turns power and the marks of true authority on their head, shown fully in verse 30. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. This isn't about self-flagellation or that somehow being Christian means torturing yourself to death. No, it's about a 180 degree reversal of our definitions of power, authority, strength, beauty, truth, and the list goes on. And this reversal comes through the Lord Jesus, the Son of God who was enthroned on a tree outside the city, reviled and held in contempt for the sake of the love he had for the world, the sake of the love that he had for us. Here is your beauty, Paul is saying. Here is refinement. Here is true power. And it involves giving up our standard measures. Here's where the rubber hits the road for us. We live in a society that thrives on telling us that we don't measure up. We live in a state of constant insecurity in ourselves and who God made us. We never measure up, and so many of us are caught up in the rat race of trying to latch on to some promise that with enough effort and enough cash, there is something about ourselves in which we can boast. However, for Christians, we boast in our weakness, not because weakness is anything in itself, but because weakness displays the Lord Jesus within us who laid down power so we might find life. In fact, you might say that it is in those places in ourselves we feel most deficient that God has determined to shine brilliantly and to bring the life-changing truth that God's power is and will be perfected in our weakness. But we're going to have more to say about that next week. Until then, brothers and sisters, let us pray. Lord, give us hearts able to receive the really great news that the cross and the resurrection turned the world upside down. And that means our evaluations, our boasts that we can take great comfort in are found in him alone. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.